We're going to get James Dello up here. He's the general manager of the Ripple Effect Group. Uh, importantly, uh, James tells us he's working without a safety net tonight, in as much as his slides are going to control him rather than the other way around. So give him a warm round of applause. Get him up here, James. Our last speaker for tonight. because I'm talking about the digital workplace that my slides are automated. So once I click go, um, even if I stop and walk off, um, things will just keep working. So um, that's a kind of modern miracle in a way. Okay, here we go. So the future of work. Now, we're already hearing really about the changes, demographics that are changing the world of work, and the digital revolution is part of that. It's very much changing the relationship between work and workplace. Now, I think that's, that's really quite significant because we know that the design of physical buildings relates to also how we organise work. And you know, looking back at um, you know, even the last 100 years, really actually I don't think offices have actually changed that much. There are a few tweaks here and there, but things are still pretty much the same. And that's because really the dominant management style hasn't really needed to evolve. But more recently we're now seeing some new styles of building emerge. Um, now this is a shift from the traditional work, sort of work, work layout to activity-based working. And it gives people a, a variety of different work areas that they can, they can work from. And this is um, following a shift which has been driven uh, by technology. But you know, one of the things that goes with that is that as well as enabling new ways of working, we've also got new ways of monitoring staff. The quantified employee, we can actually track um, almost anything potentially moving forward. So um, that also is happening at a city level. Big data means that government can track the flow of people and things. It's all driving um, optimization, which I think is you know, pretty valuable, but you know, at the end of the day, um, how is that optimization, that efficiency drive, um, improving how we interact with each other? And it kind of begs the question, if um, it doesn't actually matter where we work, why do we actually need workplaces? Why do we need cities? Because surely the ultimate efficiency would be for us to sit at home and just beam in to our workplace and, and collaborate with each other. Now, is that actually the vision for the future workplace that we want? I don't think so. I still think that we have the capability to imagine a much more human-centred um, digital workplace, a future workplace. It's about um, connecting people. Now what we're seeing, for example, and we've heard about the co-working trend, that's a really powerful trend in the workplace. We're seeing some organisations are actually encouraging the community to come into those co-working spaces. But you know, I think that's still actually constrained by you know, current thinking around what is the workplace. Um, now, we can extend the workplace out into the city uh, and we can use digital technologies to enable that. Now, popular thinking says that digital technologies are reducing um, human interaction. You know, that's not necessarily the case. Um, research is showing us that it actually enables us to, to um, organise face-to-face um, relationships. And I'm suggesting that actually we step back from our focus on the offices, and it's great that we've had all these examples tonight of sustainable buildings, and look back at the city as a whole. There are a few things we need to do to enable that, to make the city a workplace. One of them is wayfinding. So we need to help people actually find the people, the places and things that enable them to work together. Um, now, one of the first examples of that idea is actually a, a billboard, British Airways in London, and the child on the billboard follows aircraft as they fly over and identifies them. And I want you to have the idea here that wayfinding can be about telling us what's going on, where do I need to be? So we can enable people to use the whole city as a workplace by telling them where to go. And also, and this example here is actually Facebook um, visualising people's relationships in real time, is actually to find the people that we want to work with or we need to work with. So we're going to have free range employees. We actually need to connect people to where work is happening and who they need to work with. The next element that does relate to sustainability is that you know, our cities are getting more and more populated. We need to nudge people towards behaviours that encourage sustainability. Um, now, there are a couple of um, ideas on how we can support that at a city scale. First of all, we can have um, not just smart appliances, this is Brad Toaster, by the way. And if you don't use Brad, he's going to leave you. He's going to communicate and find a new owner. And the idea here is that we actually need to optimise the resources we have. It's not just by measuring usage, but actually by changing the, I guess, by changing behaviour. Another example here is Chromarama, which is a game played on London's um, transport system using smart cards. We can nudge behaviour here by, through gamification. 
maybe encourage someone to get off a stop earlier or use a part of the network that's not being utilised so we can nudge people towards efficient use of the space we have. The final thing that I think is really important for humanising our digital workplace is actually to support natural collaboration. I don't think people want to be cyborgs. Google Glass is really exciting, but I don't think we want to be cyborgs in the long term. So we need to embed um, technologies into our own environment. The example here, WorldKit, can turn any surface into an actual interactive space, uh, sorry, an interactive um, surface. So we don't actually, actually need to carry equipment with us all the time. Or, as this little black dress from um, uh, Cute Circuit shows, we can actually embed digital communication into the clothes that we wear. Um, so, you know, the future doesn't have to be about wearing Google Glass. The stuff can actually be embedded into an environment and embedded into the everyday clothing that we wear. So to summarise, technology for humanity. Um, the digital workplace could easily become a kind of a management panopticon. You know, employers are measuring and monitoring everything we do. And that's great for efficiency. But I think the, um, the real opportunity here is to turn that around. Um, step back from that kind of idea that the workplace is all about the office and optimising the office. And let's actually use technology to make the whole city our workplace. Um, that will be um, you know, the opportunities for optimising space, the opportunities for supporting new ways of working. And the way we do that is through supporting new ways of wayfinding, um, by um, nudging behaviour to encourage optimal use of resource. And finally, that really important piece is around natural collaboration. And that's how I think we can escape the digital workplace uh, and make that technology something that we actually want to use and we can make our lives better. Thank you very much.